Hi, welcome to Manage My Corner. I'm Amanda, and February is almost here. For the past few years, I've really tried to make sure that during February, I celebrate Black History Month by reading books by and about Black authors, and this year is no different. But this year, I'm going to try to focus on reading historical fiction by and about Black authors. So this list is going to be 10 historical fiction novels about Black people living in the United States or from the United States. I hesitate to call this reading recommendations because I haven't actually read any of these books, but these are all on my TBR, and I do plan to get through a lot of these books this month. Not all of them, I don't think I have time to get through them all, but I'm going to do my best to get through at least half of them. Okay, so let's begin. First up is The Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead. Now this is a book that a lot of people have probably heard of. As you can see, it won the Pulitzer Prize. And so this is a book that I've been planning to read, I just picked it up last year, and it's about people trying to escape slavery via the Underground Railroad. However, in this case, it's not a metaphor. It's actually a literal thing. And I'm so happy that this book exists because when I was younger, I have to admit, there was a brief time when I actually thought the Underground Railroad was a literal thing. But even when I thought that, I was like, no, nah, that's, that's not possible. There's no way there's like an underground tunnel under the entire United States. That's, that can't be real. But in any case, in this book, it is, and I'm really excited to read it. And after I've read it, I do plan to also watch the adaptation of this. I think it came out on Netflix a year ago. And so I do plan to watch that as soon as I've finished reading this book. Next up is The Water Dancer by Tanahisi Coates. This is a book I got in 2019 and I've been planning to read it since I got it. It looks like a very lyrical and beautiful and powerful novel. It's also set during the time of slavery and it follows this man as he tries to get reunited with the family that was taken from him. I've heard only good things about it and from what I understand, it's a very moving and heavy and eye-opening novel. This is a book that I will get to this month. I might actually read this one first, but we'll see. Next up is The Prophets by Robert Jones Jr. This book came out about a year ago, and I'm also definitely planning to read this one this month. One thing that drew me to this book is that it's not only about slavery, it's also about two gay men who are slaves. And so this seems to add an extra layer to the conversation that I haven't seen in any novels before. It looks like a really powerful and deeply moving book, and I'm excited to read this one. A new book I just picked up is Yonder by Jabari Asim. Incidentally, this book has been compared to the previous two that I just mentioned. It just came out a couple weeks ago, and I'm really excited to read this one. It's in the 1850s, and it follows these people who don't consider themselves slaves, rather, they consider themselves stolen. Likewise, they don't call the white people masters, they call them thieves. This book follows several different characters who are enslaved, and as I understand it, I think this book brings about hope and love and really shows what has strengthened this community and got them through so much hardship over the past centuries. This looks like a really powerful novel and I plan to read it right after the previous dude that I just mentioned. Another book I'm really excited to read is Conjure Woman by Afia Atakora. This book came out a couple of years ago and I bought it right when it came out and I don't know why I haven't read it yet but I really want to get to this one. This one is set immediately before and after the Civil War and it follows these three women. One is a healer, one is her daughter who is kind of hesitant to follow in her mother's footsteps, and the third is actually their master's daughter. So it follows these three different women, and it seems a little bit magical, but also looks at the different bonds between people and how relationships can change as circumstances change as well. So this one looks really powerful, and I'm glad that it highlights women in particular, and that it also takes us into the time immediately after slavery was abolished. Last year, I picked up this book, Liberty, by Caitlin Greenidge. This one is set during the Reconstruction era. It follows this young woman who has grown up free and the conflicted life paths that she has ahead of her. On the one hand, she's told to go to medical school and become a doctor because that's gonna be a very good profession now that she has that opportunity ahead of her. However, she really is drawn more to music and wants to be a musician. And then a man from Haiti proposes to her and that really sets her life into a different path. And so this book looks really interesting, and I've had it for a year now, so I'm really hoping I can get to this one. It looks really powerful. Next up is A Personal Librarian by Marie Benedict and Victoria Christopher Murray. This book came out last summer, and this one looks really interesting. It's set in the early 1900s, and it follows a black woman who is able to pass as white, and in fact, she's forced to in order to have this job that she has, working as a personal librarian of J.P. Morgan. Her race isn't her only secret. She also has a secret about her true identity as well. So this book looks really interesting, and I like that it's set in a different time. It also shows a different kind of story about a woman who's trying to adapt in a way that allows her to survive and thrive in the world that she lives in. Another book that I've had for a little bit is Wild Women and the Blues by Denny S. Bryce. 
This one is more of a musical novel, and it's set partially in the 1920s in Chicago. And it follows this woman who's working in the jazz era and trying to get ahead. Fast forward 90 years, 2015, and there's a film student who is doing some research for a project and is uncovering some interesting secrets from the past. So I like that this book is about music and it highlights the jazz era and it looks like a really interesting book and it also has that dual timeline so you get a little bit of a glimpse of the past as well as how that compares with the present. Another book that I got last summer is Sisters in Arms by Kaya Alderson. It's set during World War II, and although I've been trying to avoid a lot of books that are set during World War II, and World War I for that matter, this one has a very different take from what I've seen from other novels. It follows the first and only all-black battalion in the Women's Army Corps. So I think it's a really interesting intersection that we don't normally see in books about war. It's about women, and specifically black women, who are fighting in World War II. A very different book from what I'm normally drawn to, especially nowadays where I'm kind of a little bit over the whole World War I or World War II thing, but this one looks like a very different book, and so it's definitely one I'm excited to read. And the last book on my list is The Final Revival of Opal and Nev by Donnie Walton. This book came out a year ago and I'm really excited to read this one. It's set during the 1970s and follows a black woman, a punk artist, who ends up teaming up with a British songwriter and they make rock music in a time when there weren't that many black artists allowed to make rock music, let alone be successful at it. So it's partially set in the early 1970s in New York City and it follows this rock duo and the kind of racism that they face. But it also was partially set in 2016 and looking back and seeing how these two could maybe come together again for a reunion. So I tried to get a mixture of books here spanning about a century from the times of slavery and then the Civil War and then moving into the 1900s and seeing different kinds of circumstances that African American people have faced in this country. You might also notice that a few of these books are about music and I also featured them in my last video which is about my February reading challenge, which is to read books about black musicians. So a little bit of overlap there, I hope that's okay, but I'm really excited to read these books and I'm hoping to get through as many of them as I can. I know I'm not gonna be able to get through all of them, but I'm gonna do my best to get through most of them. So I hope you found this list useful and that maybe you'll wanna pick up some of these books and read them too. And if you've already read them, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Please leave them down below in the comments. And since I mentioned it, you can also take part in my reading challenge. That would be really fun. I'll link to the video here as well, so you can go check that out and join me for that too. And like I said, this is a very specific list of historical fiction about African American people. I know there are a lot of other lists I could make for February, including African American nonfiction, books of black joy and black romance, because it is Valentine's Day month as well. So, But in the future, I'm gonna make additional lists like this one that will highlight different aspects that would be great for Black History Month and really any time of the year because I've said before and I will keep saying I don't think we should read about specific communities only during a specific month that celebrates them. I think we should be reading these books all year long. So if you're like me and you don't have time to get through all of these books this month, don't worry, you can read them at any point in the year. It's completely fine and actually encouraged. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. And to make sure you don't miss any more of my videos, please ring the bell to get all my notifications. I put out about two to three book review videos every week, as well as one to two videos like this one. So thanks for watching this video, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!